like they say, it's all about image. Apparently it yeah. is. Not functionality, <laughs> all about image. <laughs> Okay, welcome to Radicam TV, and we're doing the um, R twelve hundred R, I think it's called. Oh, this is so nice! Here we are then. This is a cracking little bike. Um, as we'd said in our little um, talk around uh, around the bike, we um, I quite think that a ladies might be interested in this because it's a bit lower than a normal. Um, GS if you want or the um, the RS version and it's a bit more upright it's a bit of more of a a gentle riding position it's very nice everything typical about it is you know because it's a boxer it um, does what it says on the tin it'll go for a long time nice nice reasonable sized tank and I think it's probably got about a 20 litre tank but we'll confirm that and um, it's very smooth I was just trying to see if there was a quick shifter on it. There isn't. So, uh, no quick shifter on it, which is fine. Nice dashboard. Um, still not coloured like uh, Toby wants it to be, but um, does everything you want it to do. There is a rev counter, which Toby couldn't find. Good mirrors. Standard BMW mirrors on it. Obviously, it's like a naked bike. There's only a very small protective screen for the, uh, for the dashboard. Uh, this one's fitted for GPS, but hasn't got it on at the moment. I suppose that's an extra. Yeah, it's it's a nice bike. Very comfortable to ride. Nice upright riding position. Not quite a GS position. The, the foot pegs are, are a little bit high, higher than a GS if you want. Um, but they're in a nice comfy position. This bike could easily be used for a tour. Great little commuter. Right. Very responsive and very smooth. It's a water cooled engine. Um, the difference between the air cooled and the water cooled in the, the couple of years that they've been going is just it gets better and better and better second gear 1900 rpm i'm doing 25 miles an hour very nice and the engine sounds nice as well going over these huge speed bumps very comfortable the suspension's a bit rigid but that might be the setup that's already on it and i haven't changed the setup because i've just got toby's just got off this and i've just jumped on it so so it has heated grips, as you would imagine on most bikes which should be fitted standard now, this option that you have to have them fitted as extra is ridiculous on some bikes, you know, we're in 2017 for goodness sake, things like that should be just a standard, and I also think that you know, GPS's should be fitted as standard now, they are on most on cars, you know, you don't have to ask for a car now with a GPS, just fit me a GPS, although some bikes, for example the S1000RR that's in front that Toby's riding, there's I don't know how you'd fit a GPS on that because it's just so tight, so small. And the roads aren't so good today. They're, we've just got a little bit of mizzle coming now, as they say in Cornwall, which is like this drizzling rain in and out all the time. But there's just not enough to put a lot of water down on the road, just enough to make it slippy. So Toby's been very careful on the, uh, the bike in front because that is just a beast. Whereas this feels very sure-footed, I must admit. I've just gone down to first gear to see if that makes it any better. It's even sweeter when it's running at 30 miles an hour in first gear. It sounds lovely. The red line on this bike is about 9,000 RPM. So its sweet spot on the engine is about 4,500 4 RPM. Um, which is quite manageable, you know. In second gear I'm doing 3,000 uh, RPM here at uh, 30 miles an hour. That's pretty cool. It's no problem for the engine not straining at all and it's very comfortable as uh, this bike has got normal head uh, headlamps um, but it does have LED running lights which is a bit odd you think that everything is going over to LED now most most new stuff comes out straight with an LED it's like a sexy thing to have isn't it so I find it a bit weird they haven't done that I think the rear light is LED, so if you can do it on the back, why can't they do it on the front? And the reason why I say women might like this bike is because I've just come up to a junction there then, I just tried to put uh, putting both my feet down. Both feet flat on the ground, um, knees are bent, so and I'm five foot ten, so I would imagine that, you know, if a lady of about five foot three will still be able to get her tiptoes down on it, 
they're both on both um, on both feet. So I mean, it's it is very female friendly. That's just you know because I think a lot of ladies miss out on riding a shaft drive bike like this. 1200 cc, you know, they tend to go for small ER6s and things like that. You know, CBF 600s, 650. Sorry, because they're they're a smaller bike and you know, if you get some very, very competent lady riders and this might be what ticks their box for them, you know. Maybe the version with the screen on it might be a bit better. Um, I can feel quite a wind in my chest now. If you're riding a long time, that would, for me, that would be a bit irritating, but because um, obviously there's very little protection on it. But It's a big bike in a little body, if that makes sense. And I suppose it's quite a practical bike, you know, you can put panniers on it if you're commuting on this. No, it's a 1200 uh, cc engine. You know, make a great little commuter um, with panniers on it. There's a seat on the back, you know, so it's good for a pillion. And I don't think the pillion would be too uncomfortable because bikes like these don't tend to have the pillion sat right above you. It's, they're usually sat, you know, on a say almost on the same level as you really. Um, I think this would be quite a comfortable ride. Be great for touring on it as a one a one person tour I think if you could put up with the wind there is a quick shift the reason it didn't work before is because it wasn't I wasn't in the right speed for it so I must apologize for that yes there is a quick shift mr. Toby's launched the rocket <laughs> Okay, I'm doing 60 miles an hour now and the wind in your chest is quite pronounced. I would find that really annoying, but I know some people quite like that or don't mind it at all. With a bit of a screen on it, it would take that off you and I think that would make it a much better touring bike. But you know, I've seen people tour on lots of different types of bikes and you know, there's a bike for everybody. What doesn't float, one person's boat will float somebody else's. This is a cracking little bike though. I enjoy, really enjoy it. This is the R1200R. Apparently it's the naked version of the RS. How many R's can you get in a, in a, in a, a bike name? I don't know, but BMW do love putting lots of R's in there, don't they? So this is the, it's the naked version, yeah? Of the RS, apparently, yeah. yeah. Which is, I, I like it. The riding position is really nice. One thing that I did notice is when you look at the bike, it looks like you're going to be sat on it much much like a sports bike, yep. but you're actually sat quite in it. Yep. Which I found found really weird, to be honest, because I, I thought that... Well, I, we've got a demonstration here. Yeah, I thought that I would be sat sort of up here, but actually very in it. It's almost like a cross between the RS, the GS, the Adventure. I, when, I was riding, nice when I was riding behind you, it looked a nice position, because I've been riding the... S thousand RR. There's more R's in that than you can even. And <laughs> um, we'll talk about that later because I was begging to get on this because it looks so much more comfortable. Yeah, it is really comfortable, and you know a lot of it's down to these things here, these beautiful, beautiful pots, which everyone hates. Everyone slags off the uh, the um, the BMW boxer engine. It's been going a long time. It does what it says on the tin. And like I'm saying on the video. What I really like about it is when they're making that engine, they refined it for so many different uses. So yep. You've got the adventure, you've got the road bikes, you've got the RTs, all that sort of stuff. Why fix it if it's not broken? Yep, and it's a liquid cooled. I mean, I know they've got a lot of spare engines and they're doing a lot of air cooled engines yeah. now. They're 90s, but this is a liquid cooled version. Big radiator on the front there. And I like the styling as well, because this is, it's not a cafe racer bike, but it's kind of in between there and a, a naked, sporty yeah. thing yeah you know it, it does look really sporty doesn't it i like the it's almost like an alien at the front isn't it yeah do you know what this this makes me think of if you think of a, uh the ktm um what was on we rode the road the oh, i can't remember what it was the 1090 oh the 1290 super duke the dukes yeah, yeah yeah like you ride one of those okay and that's just like bonkers and this is more of a Similar sort of style of bike, but it's more of a Chesterfield chair. Yeah, it's more of a, a relaxed bonkers bike. Yep, if you can have such a thing. Yeah. But I like the styling. 
I mean, they've got a blue frame and, you know, I kind of don't get sometimes BMWs thinking with their colour schemes. <laughs> really nice colour scheme, but the triple black hasn't, uh, triple black GS hasn't got a black frame. It's got a grey one, hasn't it? Yeah. Which is kind of weird because it's a triple black. But this one kind of makes it pop, doesn't it? Yeah. And, you know, it's got all the, all the same things. I mean, you would be mistaken is if, if you put a bit of cardboard across here that this could have been, could be any one of the BMW range, really. Yep. Um, the GS Adventure, the tr um, the GS, any, the RS, any one of those it could be. It's got a really good shaft drive, tried and tested. Yet again, there's a massive space here for a load of dirt and there is no hugger whatsoever. I just don't know why. It's one of our bugbears out, isn't it? It is. <laughs> I'm just going to come in a bit closer there and uh, show you this huge gap. Huge, huge gap there. But they have thought about loads of stuff like preparatory fittings for luggage. Preparatory? Where do you get that word from? I don't know, in my dictionary of you've motorbike. Made, you've made motorbike that up, mate. Um, but the panniers that you can get for these, they are good. You can get helmet, I think, in both sides, but they're quite plasticky and I think they only come in one colour. Yep. Um, which is like a silver or you know, two colours, perhaps a silver and a black. So you've got to think about whether you want the store or whether you want the style to be the same as the bike. But big, huge wheels. They're handy. One at each end. <laughs> One at each end, yeah. <laughs> it's it's quite, a, quite a thick thick back wheel as well and one good thing quite a thick back wheel <laughs> well, we're, we're so technologically yeah, we're, minded we're brilliant. one thing that i do like about this is that i don't like about our adventures is you can fill it up with air really easily and yeah. not fight with anything well we've got a spoke spoked wheel so that's part of the problem but, yeah you know they could put angled things on angled things angled, angled fillers. things see we're really technical yeah, there's yeah. a knob for this and that's an angled thing I'll tell you what I do like about this because I do feel having just got back um, having just got that's me having just got back from a tour with um, to northern Spain oh you did that one too you were right. I thought I saw you there that was with uh, Miguel and motorcycle tours we'll just plug you again there Felix no charge and we are editing at the moment so keep watching <laughs> <coughs> a lot of um, a lot of ladies, and we had, a, we had a, uh, a lady rider with us, feel very restricted about the bikes that they can ride. And um, this a particular lady had got, she's concerned about the height of the bike. Well, this looks quite, actually quite low. This shaft it drive, is low. When we talked to her, you know, about all the things she wanted, she, one of the things she mentioned was she'd love a shaft drive. But this, this seems like the sort of thing that a woman could ride. And I don't mean that in a, in a sort yeah, of sexist yeah. fashion. I mean, this is the sort of thing that, you know, with a bit... If the seat could be higher and lowered a bit, then why not? I think it'd be great for Yeah, so Linda, the lady, if you're watching, we'll send you the link. Have a look at one of these babies. Linda, I think they do it in pink, especially for mad doctors. <laughs> <laughs> I like this dashboard, although, you know, this is a 2017 bike mm -hmm. and still they're not coming out with any colours. So when you think about the 1290 Adventure S that we yeah. rode um, from KTM, <coughs> They're coming out with beautiful screens. And we know that BMW are on the way because KTM are moving people that way, aren't they? Mm -hmm. But, you know, in terms of visibility, the one thing I did notice about this is there isn't a rev counter. Isn't there? No, you've got a speeder, an analogue speeder. You've got how fast you go in there digital. You've got all your information, but there's no rev counter on there. This is the smug face <laughs> of the person that has just found that you can... I'm going to turn it off because it's that you can actually put the rev counter on the top really easily. How did you do it, Mark? Can you remember? I uh, know oh I can't. That's part of my problem. It's all to do with the uh, buttons here and holding things down. Yeah, I think it's you pressed and held the trip or something it's like that. It's pretty standard. But it's it's really functional. What I really did like about this. You this, like it now? You didn't like it before? Well, yeah, I did like the display. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about it is it's just in the right place so you can flick your eyes down you haven't got to move your head everywhere to find all the information that you need yeah like that like that a lot and all of the switch gear is exactly the same as the rest of the range as Mark's pressing all his buttons there exactly the same so got LEDs and two bulbs so it's got a headlamp 
I'm going to flash the main beam now. Flash so the main break, beam? It... Yeah, that's good. So even though the bulbs are still quite light, and you've got LED indicators as well. There you go. As um, demonstrated by Mr. Mark. Oh, and the other side. Oh, no, they're off. It's a light. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's a light. It yeah, I know. Though? Big Brembo brakes. And I guess that they've had two BMW on this one. Put the radiator quite high up because of that engine. Yeah. Which is quite good, isn't it? It's always in this... It's almost in the same position as a GS, a GS, isn't it? But that, yeah. that split, so it just goes right across the front. I wonder what it's like in their factory. Do you think that they just have a load of frames and they just put the bodies on it? It's probably like some out of the Transformers factory, isn't it? Oh, try this! <laughs> yeah. Let's see what this does. That is good, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but, but it does look nice. All in all, I think this is a nice little bike. Like you said, you know, it's quite a low bike. So lots of people are going to be able to ride it. It's got all these gaz gadget gadgets and gizmos. Gizmo, gadgets, yeah. What are they then? It's got the dynamic ESA and all of that sort of stuff. The damping you can set it for different um, heights and stuff for your um, luggage and things. So one up, two up, that sort of thing. Yeah. The seat, I found it really comfortable. Cool. I don't know how you'll find it, but I I like the fact that it drops away really quick, so you don't get any pressure on your inner thigh. You'll notice here there's um. They've probably got some kind of name for it. It's a valve fits on the exhaust. It's one of my uh, pet gripes, oh, yeah. actually, because it, it, it apparently changes the, the pitch of the exhaust. Yeah. And um, 500 quid they are. 500 pounds? Yeah, they don't, they're not covered. Is that English Queen heads? It is. And it's not uh, covered by any warranty. And after about 18 months, they always fail. But they fail open. Yeah. And when uh, BMW replaced them, they said, oh, you know, you have to have it because it, it's... It's good for the engine and it's all about um, emissions and everything. Does nothing, all right? And you know it does nothing because Wunderlich have a replacement for it in their catalog. Yeah. And it's a 30 pound, 30 quid, 30 US, uh, US dollars, 30 <laughs> great British pounds. It's a piece of pipe and basically you cut it out and just replace it. I don't know why they fit it. One thing we did notice is these little bits of trim down at the bottom, belly pan type thing, really flimsy. And I guess you're not going to be taking it off road or anything like that, are you? But um, yeah. if you're going down a gravel lane or something, or I don't know, we did a bit of off road and when we were in Spain to get to a car park for some views, you know, that's got to be a, a thought as to where you go and how you do it, isn't it? That's quite mm. a flimsy bit of plastic, really. 